Hello dear students, we have looked at circles, angles and right triangles, now we finally start with the sine and cosine. Why do we need that anyway? With the Pythagorean theorem we found that once we know two sides of a right triangle, we can always calculate the third side. But what do we do in the case when we are only given one side and the other two sides are unknown? Is there a way we can find the unknown sides? The answer to that question is yes, because we can use the sign to help us. Once we have a side and the angle opposite it, in this case A, we can calculate the rest of the right triangle. We will take a closer look at that, but first we have to clarify a few terms. Here we see a right triangle, here is the right angle, here alpha, here beta, and we have the three sides. And above it here we have these terms, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. These are important terms that we definitely need to master. The most important thing is the hypotenuse, and that's the simplest thing, because that's always the longest side of the right triangle. And the longest side is always opposite the right angle. So if someone asks you about the hypotenuse, you look, where is the right angle? Find the side opposite, and that's the hypotenuse. By the way, hypotenuse translates as outstretched. This makes sense, as it's always the longest side of the right triangle. The other two sides are called legs, the two shorter sides, and a leg may be either opposite or adjacent. So depending on which angle we select here, the terms change. Let's take beta first. Let's activate it, and you see. Beta looks at these legs, this leg lies opposite to beta, and with opposite you can notice immediately. That's the opposite leg. So beta looks at its opposite. And of course, beta has at its foot the adjacent, which lies at the foot of beta. And even if we now rotate the triangle, you see, the opposing leg doesn't change, and the adjacent also stays the same for beta. So you can see it's easy. Beta always looks against a wall opposite, that's the opposite. Beta has two more sides, which lie against it. One of them must be the hypotenuse, the longest side in the triangle, then the other side can only be the adjacent. And let's see what holds for alpha. Alpha looks on its opposite, and at alpha is the adjacent. And if we turn the triangle here now, you will see, if we imagine, here is a wall, then alpha looks against the wall, which is the opposite leg. And on alpha there are two sides, the hypotenuse, the longest side, and the shorter side, that must be the adjacent of alpha. These terms are essential, so we will explain them in detail here. You definitely have to master it. And who asks now? What about gamma? For gamma there is neither opposite nor adjacent, here we have only the longest side, the hypotenuse. Well, in the next step, we will look at right-angled triangles of different sizes. So we have a right-angled triangle here, here is the right angle, and here we have beta. And beta looks at its opposite, that side of the triangle. And at beta is its adjacent. And the hypotenuse, here the green line, the longest side in the triangle is 8 cm, abbreviated HY. The angle is 30 degrees, as we see here, and now we want to say this. We can change the size of the triangle, and as you can see, the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse all change their value. It looks at first glance very arbitrary, so there seems to be no connection. But we can do the following. We can put the hypotenuse and the opposite in a ratio, for example. Ratio means we divide one side by the other side. 
And now if we divide the opposite of 4 cm by the hypotenuse of 8 cm 4 divided by 8 is 0 0.5 so we have a ratio. And up here the same thing, opposite divided by hypotenuse, 4 cm divided by 8 cm is 0 0.5. By the way, if we change the size of the triangle, it will stay that way. Very important. For the same angle, 30 degrees in this example, it will stay the same. For example, if we reduce the size of the opposite side to 3 cm, then we see that the hypotenuse is 6 cm long. 3 divided by 6 is 0 0.5, so again the same value 0 0.5, the same as 4 divided by 8. If we reduce further to, for example, opposite side of 2, we see, 2 divided by 4 is 0 0.5. That is, no matter what size we have for this triangle at an angle of 30 degrees, if we divide the opposite by the hypotenuse, we always get 0 0.5. In other words, the opposite is always 0.5 times as long as the hypotenuse, so half as long at an angle of 30 degrees. Here, 11.42 cm for the hypotenuse. We know the length of the opposite must be 0.5 times the hypotenuse. That means 11.42, half of which is 5.71. Or you can look at it the other way around. If we have 5 cm here now, then we know the hypotenuse has to be twice as long. We can do the same for the adjacent as well, we can place the adjacent in relation to the hypotenuse. At an angle of 30 degrees we see. The adjacent is 8.67 cm for this case, the hypotenuse is 10 cm, and 8.67 divided by 10 is around 0.87. If we reduce our triangle, 6 in relation to 6.92, then 6 divided by 6.92 is 0 0.87. And here too we can set any sizes, and we will always get out 0 0.87 for the ratio of the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. By the way, we can look at these ratios directly from the triangle, 0 0.5 and 0 0.87, and now you see. The ratio never changes. The opposite is always 0.5 times as large as the hypotenuse, and the adjacent will always be 0.87 times the size of the hypotenuse. These ratio values always apply at an angle of 30 degrees. And as a hint, 0.5, which we learned about with calculating percentages, is the same as 50 divided by 100, and that's 50%. And 0.87 can also be written as 87%. And then one can say, 50% of the hypotenuse, that is the length of the opposite, and 87% of the hypotenuse, that is the length of the adjacent. How can we change these values for the opposite leg and for the adjacent leg? If we change our angle here, you see, they change. That is, the aspect ratios are dependent on the angle. And let's go to the angle 0, then we have no triangle at all, because then the hypotenuse is on top of the adjacent. So you see, the green line lays down on the red line. And what happens then? The opposite, which is already very small here, becomes 0. So if we now divide the length of the opposite by the hypotenuse, let's take centimeters again. 8.82 centimeters is the hypotenuse, now it is 8.74, and 0 divided by 8.74 is 0 because 0 divided by any value is 0. In other words, the opposite is 0 times as long as the hypotenuse. And 8.74 times 0, of course we know is 0. And the adjacent is now the same length as the hypotenuse, and that we see here, 8.74 divided by 8.74 is 1. So the adjacent is the same length as the hypotenuse, or one can also say, the adjacent has 100% of the length of the hypotenuse. If we now open our triangle and again look at the ratios, we see that the adjacent decreases in length relative to the hypotenuse.
make our triangle a little smaller, then you can see that better. And the larger the angle becomes, the closer it gets to 90 degrees, the bigger the opposite gets and the smaller the adjacent is in proportion. If we take a reasonable value such as 60 degrees, then you see. At 60 degrees, the opposite is 0.87 times as long as the hypotenuse and the adjacent is 0.5 times as long as the hypotenuse. And if we go to 90 degrees here, you see. The opposite gets bigger and bigger until it's worth 1, until it's the same size as the hypotenuse. And the adjacent is 0, so it's 0 times as large as the hypotenuse. An important note, since the centimeter values depend on how big or small our triangle is, we can use a little trick in which the values, that is, the ratios are always directly displayed. We make our triangle so small that the hypotenuse is exactly one centimeter long. What do we achieve with this? As you can see up here, we now have 0.57 cm for the opposite leg, the height, we see here. And 0.57 divided by 1 cm, the hypotenuse, is 0.57. That's exactly the ratio, 0.57. And the same for the adjacent. The adjacent is 0.82 cm long, divided by 1 cm is again 0.82. That is, putting the hypotenuse at 1 cm, we can read off the ratio values directly from the opposite and adjacent side lengths. Well, let's take a closer look to help us recognize that better. But more on this in the next part, in which we will look at the terms for the aspect ratios, namely the aspect ratio of the opposite, which is called sine, and the aspect ratio of the adjacent, which is called cosine.